Hey guys, welcome back. Happy New Year. Woo woo! 2016. You guys are actually going to graduate this year. Okay, so let's look at the objectives from this particular tape. Here we are going to be looking at finding the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. We're going to be checking the 10% rule and we're going to also and we might get to this, determine if the sampling distribution p hat is approximately normal. Okay, so now that we've looked at our objectives, as you turn to the back side of your objectives, you see a puzzle that you guys are going to be doing a little later, but I'm going to continue on to do a quick review of 7.1, sampling distributions, the overall idea, and the symbols. Remember, here is our entire population. As we look at the population, that's the big picture. Okay, we use the letter N to represent the count for the population. Remember, we use our Greek. The mean is mu. The variance is going to be sigma squared, and the standard deviation is sigma. Now, as we look at here, the little picture, taking the tree, given the entire forest, here I have a sample, and let's look at our notations, reminding ourselves. So we have a sample size, n, lowercase n. Okay, our mean for the sample, please remember, is x bar. Our variance is s squared, and our standard deviation is s. So remember, as we stated, in most cases, whenever we're dealing with the population, we're looking at our Greek. So, as we look at the new topic that I just gave you the objectives on, what is a sampling proportion? Now, remember, a sampling distribution is we've talked about the candy, and we have bags of candy, and inside of the bag of candy, it may have 25 pieces. Well, we're not going to just sample one bag of candy. We're going to sample, let's say, 50 bags of candy that have 25 pieces each. This is an idea of what a sampling distribution is, and specifically what I have here is a sampling proportion. And remember, proportion is nothing but same percentage. So we're taking it from an SRS, that's our population. Remember, sample size N, big N, that's the population. And we're taking samples, and if I take samples, our number of successes, and remember our samples is the lowercase n, and our successes is going to be referred to as p hat. So as we look at, as we add here, I might want to say here p hat is our, for our sample proportion. And also note that I added to the population the letter p, okay, and that's the only time that we don't have the Greek. Remember I also said they use rho sometimes, and rho, remember, looks like a p. Oh, that was really bad. Okay, but anyway, um, that is for the population. So the next thing is, now let's look at our new formulas for our means and standard deviations. Now, this is kind of weird. We're saying that the mean of p hat, which we're saying the, the, the mean for the sample, okay, is equal to that of the population. Well, how is that possible? We're saying if I have a sample of 33 and the average, um, let's say the average um, percentage of success is 80%, that's true of the entire population? Well, how is that true? But before we get there, let's look at our next formula, and then we'll discuss it. I think you already know we're going to be using the law of large numbers to come up with this ideology. Okay, let's look at our new symbols. Here we're talking about the standard deviation of p hat. Again, we're talking about the standard deviation of the sample proportion. And notice here we're talking about p, which is the probability of success for the population, times 1 minus the probability of that success over the square root of, um, excuse me, over n. And then I'm going to take the square root of that whole thing. So as I repeat myself, um, the population p minus p naught divided by n, and then I'm just going to take one big fact square root. Now, that makes sense because the formula is not saying that standard deviation of the big group is going to be equal to standard deviation of the small, but here, for the mean, it's like, what the heck? How is that true? Because of these conditions. Here, 
the 10% condition, and we've discussed this before, and as we look at the 10% condition, we're saying here, again, big N, that the population's got to be greater than or equal to 10 times the sample size. Here it is in symbols, and here it is in words. Okay, also as we look at the 10% rule, please recognize it could be written this way. So you've got a choice. You can do the math. You can choose whichever way. But the bottom line is that the population has got to be greater than the sample size by at least 10, a multiple of 10. Okay, next, let's look at the overall idea here of the whole premise behind statistics is to get samples and make and then um, infer something about the entire population. So inference about the population, and remember that's the letter P, is based on a sampling distribution of P hat when we have a sample that's large enough for N times P to be at least um, equal to 10, sorry for the hesitation, okay, but also n times p naught to be at least as um, big as 10. Mathematically speaking, for those of you who need to see the math here, this is n times p being greater than or equal to 10, and this is n times 1 minus p has got to be greater than or equal to 10. Because I know many of you guys, when it comes to the algebraic symbols, you still have trouble with it. So remember I told you, if you don't know your symbols, use your words. Remember, this is the idea of the law of large counts. So if we take, go back and then look at this idea right here, in which I said, why is that possible? Why is it possible for me to take the um, percent average of a small group and say that must be true of the entire population. As I mentioned before, it's, be, it's because of the idea of the law of large, the, lar, the large count condition, the large count condition. And I always refer to it as the law of large numbers. Okay, so whichever way you want to learn it. Remember that means that here, as we continue looking at this, that the sampling distribution p hat is approximately normal Woo woo! We can use that normal probability coming up. We can use the normal distribution, okay, which means z score. And we know when we have to do um, probabilities that way, it's a heck of a lot easier than using all those different probability rules that we've had to use in the past. Now let's look at a few examples. Take a minute, pause, please, and read over this. Okay, so we have a large machine that has 45% orange. We have an SRS of 25 candies from the machine. Okay, what does the mean? Well, here, because we have um, the 25, and we are stating that, oh, large candy, we have a large number of candies, it's a large machine, then we can make the assumption that the mean of the sample is going to equal the mean of the the mean of the population. So the mean of the sample is going to equal that of the proportion, I should say, which is 45%. Next, as I continue, finding the standard deviation. Well, here, remember, we just take our formula. And as we just take our formula, we know that P is 45% and that P naught is um, 55%. Take it and crank it. And then they asked us to see also here to check to, to see if the 10% condition is met. Well, here 10 times 25 is equal to 250. As we use the um, one of the two formulas that I gave you, here since the entire population is going to, uh, which is all candies in the machines, it's reasonable to um, assume that it's going to be greater than or equal to the 250 right there. So yes, the 10% condition applies. And please notice what I said. It is reasonable to assume. Next, let's look at the next problem. Now, um, and pause if you haven't already paused. 
So here, the 10% the condition, yes, it has been met. And I'm going to do it slightly different here. Because here, as we look at the idea of the sample size, here being greater than or, excuse me, the sample size being less than or equal to one-tenth of the entire population, okay, this is the percentage that is collected or selected, and that means, therefore, it is reasonable. As you look at part B, large count condition has it been met. Well, since n is equal to 7 and your p is equal to 42 over 100, based on the information we have right here, okay, do your math. You see that n times p, which is 7 times 0.42, is not greater than or equal to 10, nor is, why didn't I write this down, n times 1 minus p. So no, it does not meet it. And the, uh, the reality is, it does not matter. If it, didn't, if it failed for one, why do I waste my time to do the second one? I don't know, just because that's how I roll sometimes. Okay, so now look at problem number 34. Okay, pause and read, please. Okay, so here the answer is no. It does not meet the condition because here they told us that we have the entire population right here. This is your big N, which is 316. Your sample is 50. Going back to using the N is greater than or equal to 10 times N and restating that the population of all athletes, which is 316, is greater than or equal to 10 times the sample. That is not true. Therefore, um, the 10% rule does not apply. Okay, so guys, I need you guys to um, finish, do the puzzle, and there's some multiple choice questions that you're going to have to do also. Have a good day. Have fun doing your homework or classwork. Bye-bye.